The Bears are one and two. Remember, week one, he only threw for 94 yards. Week three, just four days ago, he threw two interceptions and had a lost fumble. Chase, you played quarterback for 14 years in the NFL. No one better suited to answer this question than you. You played quarterback for the Chicago Bears franchise. You know what it's like to walk through, what is it, Hallis Hall? Hallis Hall. Hallis Hall. That's you right. know exactly what that's like, big dog. So Hallis, Papa Bear. That's what they call him. <laughs> Chase, answer me this, man. How bad does Jaden Williams' success make Caleb, Jaden Daniels' success make Caleb Williams look? I don't think at all Jaden Daniels' success has anything to do with Caleb Williams. So I don't think it, it really is apples to apples. And I just want to say, like, everyone has a plan at quarterback until you get hit. <laughs> and that's what defenses want to do. They want to hit you over and over and over again. Without a doubt, Jaden Daniels' offensive line has been significantly better than Caleb Williams' offensive line. The Bears have allowed the eighth most pressures this season. When I watch film of Caleb Williams, he's rarely getting to his second or third read because of the pressure that he's facing. He's got it. He's been Houdini out there. He's gotten out of some sacks that I didn't know even he could do. And then the commanders have allowed the ninth fewest pressures this season. So it's really hard to compare the twos, especially after three games. But I get into the fact that teams versus the Chicago Bears on defense, they're playing a bunch of two high safety looks. And they're doing that because the Bears have been without their secret weapon, Keenan Allen. I played with Keenan for two years in Chicago. He is a quarterback's best friend on those short intermediate routes. The separation he gets is excellent. I don't see Bears receivers separating. So if the Chicago Bears can't run the football, which DeAndre Swift has 68 total yeah, rushing yards. I'm mad at you, Chase. I'm just being honest. DeAndre Swift has 68 total rushing yards this year and you don't have Keenan Allen underneath to get separation, what do you want Caleb to do? Because I'm sitting there watching the film, like, they're playing too high every single snap. Caleb doesn't have an answer for it. What I would want Caleb to do is what Jaden Daniels did. Remember what Jaden Daniels did with the game on the line, third and seven. He said, I knew I was going to get hit. Courage. But I trusted my guy. Yeah. He knew he was going to get pressured. It was quite literally a zero pressure, yeah. which means the Cincinnati Bengals are bringing more than the Washington Commanders even have the capability to block. Jaden said, I know I'm going to get hit. I don't care. I'm still about to throw a dot to scary Terry, Terry McLaurin to win the game. That's what, what I would want Jaden to do. I think Jaden's success is making Caleb look worse, not because it necessarily should, just because it is. Comparison is a thief of joy. We know that. Yep. So if you got two wealthy individuals standing next to each other, mm -hmm. the wealthier one's going to make the wealthy one look worse. I saw, Shady, I don't know if you'll believe this. I saw on X the other day, um, uh, Elon Musk was going to Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban, <laughs> I believe, is worth $4 billion. I don't know if y'all saw this at home. <laughs> that people were alleging that Mark Cuban wanted to buy X, what formerly known as Twitter. Just say and, Twitter. And bro. Elon Musk was like, Elon Musk was like, you only got $4, million, $4 billion. You can't afford to. <laughs> I said billionaire oh, and billionaire yeah, now. Crazy. Crazy. Elon Musk I, money. I, I say that to say they both billionaires. But one billionaire, Elon Musk, who has significantly more wealth than the other billionaire, Mark Cuban, made the other billionaire look worse because comparison is a thief of joy. I think that Jaden Daniels is making Caleb Williams look worse because it was all fun and games when all the rookie quarterbacks were struggling. James, mm. Bo, Nix, Caleb, Jaden. But now the one is balling? Nah, I think Bo Nix is playing well, no too. More. Exactly yeah. right. He's playing better than Caleb Williams. Yeah, um, it doesn't make him look good, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, because when you turn the tape on and... The quarterback next to me, he could talk about the receivers are not getting open and all that type stuff, but somehow DJ Moore was open last year. Yeah. You know, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know Different what offensive coordinator. Yeah, right. Right. Different yeah. offensive coordinator. Yeah. But he Different ain't open this year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With a better quarterback. Because uh -huh. you got Justin Fields out of there with a better quarterback. He ain't open this year. So I don't necessarily think it's not the receivers getting open. It's a lot of bad decision-making by Caleb Williams. And I'm not overreacting because he is a rookie. But... When you watch these other rookies play, when you watch Jaden Daniels play the football game, when you watch Bo Nix play the football game, they look like they know what they're doing. They look like they know what they're seeing out there. They look like they know what the defense is doing. They are making plays with their legs. Everything Caleb Williams did in college, these two young fellas are transferring to the NFL. And the one that we thought would transfer to the NFL early and Caleb Williams is not. Some of these throws that he made in the Indianapolis Colts game had nothing to do with play calling, had nothing to do with offensive line, had everything to do with his decision making. It was not the right decision. And then when you turn the tape on on Monday Night Football 
and you watch Jaden Daniels be in command, make all the right decisions, whether it's with his legs, whether it's with his arm, whether it's on fourth down, whatever it is. Because the fourth and, I mean, the third and seven that he seven. threw to Scary Terry, okay. it was a lot of separation. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> the damn. Zero. You know what I'm saying? But he had to make the people around him better. Caleb Williams is struggling right now. The other two are not as struggling as bad as Caleb Williams. Yeah. You can touch on offensive coordinator. You can touch on O-line. You can touch on Caleb Williams. But he's not playing well. And to see Jaden Daniels playing the way he's playing right now, it's a bad look. We did not think mm. Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams was even. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's looking like Caleb Williams is not on the same level as Jaden Daniels early in the season. I'm not saying it's going to stay like that, yeah. but early in the season, Jaden Daniels clearly looks like the better player. And this is why I never really grade rookies, because I know how hard it is to be a rookie, let alone be a quarterback. I mean, we, we're talking about who's better or not better, yeah. or who's worse and all that. Jaden was a freaking second pick over, overall for a reason. Like, you went number one, but I went number two. That's so close. You know what? But it, it brings me back to other rookies that Maybe had better rookie seasons, right? But their total career wasn't the same. When you draft these dudes, you're not drafting this from year to year. It's a it's a contract for uh, um, the duration of your your whatever how long you signed for that that team. Deal so if I come in as a rookie, it's not just about my first year. When they took me, they're like, oh, we got Shady McCoy for these next four years. Hopefully, we get a superstar player, which you know. Mm -hmm. that <laughs> when I look at Kayla Williams, right, I think he has Hall of Fame talent. We all thought that, right? Yes. But we not we need, I didn't think he would be that in his first year. Or Jaden. I didn't think he'd be in his first year. Now, look at a guy like Baker Mayfield. He came in the same year as Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson, right? If I told you, like, yo, when you first in for the first year, now I played with Josh, so I know more than most people know. Yeah. But you would say, yo, they got it right. The first pick overall was Baker Mayfield. He, looked, he had the better rookie season. He's the better quarterback. But then as we got on, year one, year two, year three, and we get to this point, we know who the better player is. So we need to slow our breaks a little bit about who's the better quarterback right now because from year one to year two, you're going to see the biggest jump you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I've lived it. I know it, right? And I think that let's give Kelly Williams some time. He's not playing well right now. He is a rookie. But I, I sure think that eventually the guy that we all thought he was super special in college, no we're going to see him eventually. I yeah. agree with that wholeheartedly. Here's really the reason I think Caleb looks worse is because I listened to people at the desk. Chase, two weeks ago, you brought up something incredibly intelligent. You were saying how hard it is for rookie quarterbacks. You said, yo, imagine everything Caleb has to deal with and has to process. I was like, that's a lot. And at the time, I was like, yo, Chase is preaching because Bo Nix dealing with it, he's struggling. Jaden dealing with yeah. it, he's struggling. But now I'm like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Jaden dealing with the same rookie woes that Caleb dealing with. Now, there's a little difference, and Shady can, uh, can attest to it more than I can. The number one overall pick gets way more attention than the number two overall pick. So let me make that abundantly yeah. clear. There's a difference there. But as it pertains to rookies dealing with transitioning to the NFL, rookies having to start, rookies having to win over a locker room, rookies having to learn a new playbook, and rookies having to enunciate the verbiage of an NFL playbook, Jaden is having to deal with the same. Jaden just making it look better. But Jaden's running the college offense. I'm, I'm about to say that, though. I, I, I'm just saying. Can, can we say this, though, real quick? When I, when I watch Caleb Williams play with the Bears and I watch Jaden Daniels play with the Washington Come Commanders, on. talk about it. It looks like he's so much comfortable, like he's back in LSU. It is. Yeah. All of, it, it looks is. the same. And, I, and I love what Dan it's Quinn insane, did for getting Kingsbury Kingsburg. because now it looks the same. All this RPO so, stuff, he's screaming, he's throwing. When I look at Caleb Williams, yeah. he don't look like he's back in USC. I think he has to get used to that offense and that NFL scheme. But it's going to come eventually, well, it, though. It's Shane Waldron. Shane Waldron came from uh, Seattle, right? the Seahawks. Yep. Okay, yep. and so Geno Smith, that is a very complex offense. Okay, there's oh. a reason why he's wearing wristbands. And you go over to Jaden's side, and all those talks, Kim Taylor Britt, I think, said it. Yep. Like, oh, he's running a college offense. People took it as a slight, and it was it's really just not, honest. though. And yeah. it's, it's, it, it's more than a college offense. But I'm seeing on film what LSU did and had success with. Um, Jaden Daniels translate to the Washington Commanders offense. That's just good coaching. That's smart. That's smart coaching because you're going to put Jaden Daniels in a situation that he feels comfortable with. It's not really long play calls. Cliff Kingsbury's sheet of plays is this big. Mm -hmm. That's it. That that that's all. Most are most like Sean Payton, Bo Nix, like everyone's offense is like multi, and that's what Caleb's offense is right now. So I think what you're seeing with Jaden is an ability to play fast. He's playing fast, but he's not sped up. I see Caleb Williams sped up because of his offensive line and because he's not at the line of scrimmage thinking about where should I throw the ball. I need to think about this guy motioning. I need to think about this offensive lineman. I need to mic it right. Oh, if this free safety comes down, I got to switch the mic. 
there's a lot going on in Caleb's head, rightfully so, because it's a difficult scheme. They have yeah. to simplify it there. When you look at Jaden's offense, I don't see the same That's thing. really good. Let me ask the two uh, skill players on the outside end, how much patience, and be honest, obviously, y'all in, in, in yeah, the is. facility, how much patience, James and Shady, are you going to give the rookie? Shady, I remember you were an all-pro when Josh Allen showed up, and you're like, ah, I got to waste a year. You didn't say this, oh. obviously. No, no, obviously. no, 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 I don't know. But, no, no. but I you did have to like, waste a year yeah, we, of your career. Yeah. Uh, there was, I remember after the game, watching Jaden Daniels' teammate, Terry McLaurin, Dude. celebrating with him, and he's showing love with him and all the things, and, and they look all good. Y'all see this, Scary Terry, his wide receiver, uh -huh. James Jones, that would proverbially be, be, be you. But then <laughs> I remember watching the Bears game. Yep. And I remember seeing DJ Moore on the bench. Mm reconsidering his life decisions. <laughs> so my question for the two stars on the anchoring this desk is, how much patience can you give, Caleb? Because for DJ Moore, this year's seven or something for him. Yeah. He just had an all-pro season, if I'm not mistaken. He wants more of those. Well, when you get a rookie, this is part of it. So we see Scary Terry doing it, laughing and joking and having a great time because he deserves that. But there's gonna be moments when you have a DJ Moore moment. Like, yo, I'm yeah. wide open, whatever we doing. Because sure. you have a rookie and everything is so fast, so new. I'll give you a quick story, and I'm gonna let James go, right? Two of them. One is, I remember being with the Bills, right? And I always had, even with the Eagles a little bit, but I always had an issue with the scouts and the GMs about why you go out there and you draft this player. You watch him all, all, all year. You, you study his game, his deficiencies, what he does well, right? And then you draft him and you bring him to your team and you want him to learn a whole new scheme. I'm thinking like, how does that make sense? He killed in this scheme for all these years yeah. in college. But you bring him to your team and want him to fit into your, your scheme. No. <laughs> yeah. Bring this guy and put him in something he's so familiar with because he'll, be play, he'll, play, he'll play better. I'll give you an example. And the story is with Andy Reid. I remember when, uh, when I first got, he was selling me on coming to, because uh, this one I, I believe in Buffalo. They won't give my money I like, so I say, yo, let me go. <laughs> Andy Reid calling me like, come here. We got this Patrick Mahomes, all this stuff. So I go there, and I remember my first week there, because me and Andy, we just busted up talking, you know, yeah. joking and everything. And I'll say, yo, tell me about Pat, because I see what he's doing on the, on the tape and all that, but tell me about it. And he's like, the kid is special, right? He's a great leader, great competitor. He said he had a lot, a lot of talent. He said, but sometimes he can get, you know, a little wild, because he's a little wild in college. Mm -hmm. He said, so what I did was, I had my own West Coast scheme that I had. He said, but when I want the special things, he said, I went back to Texas Tech oh. and got all his best things that he did well, and I got the Texas Tech stuff, and I mixed it with my things, and that's became, and that was back, Patrick Mahomes became the superstar player that we see today. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's the same thing Feels in Tampa. My last year in Tampa with uh, Tom Brady, for the first, like, four, maybe six weeks, we couldn't really get it together, right? And after the bye, you know, Bruce Arians he, and uh, um, Brian left, which they got their own little thing going on, and Tom Brady's been in the system for 20 years with the Patriots. <laughs> Even though it's Tom Brady, he still knows this system. It was something new to him, like a rookie. So what did they do? They mixed in Bruce Arians stuff, mm -hmm. right, and Leftwich stuff, and they mixed in what Tom Brady did at the Patriots. Yeah. You put it all together, and that's when we started running off. Yeah. So my point being is, yo, I get that's your system you have here in the NFL, but yo, go back and get something that's good that does well that he's been doing for so long. Those and you put it together, though, yeah. yeah. I, I, I agree with that um, because they can't call the game better for him, and he can play better because yeah. let's, let's not just keep beating around that. Because it's a lot of throws, like I say, that he ain't even seeing the right defenses. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he can play her. But DJ Moore, I see you, dog. I see you. I played with a rookie quarterback in Derek Carr. It's frustrating, right? You're trying to get on the same page. You've been with the, this dude for a couple years, right? You know exactly he knows exactly where you're gonna be on certain routes. He knows exactly where you want the ball. You guys can look at each other and know what check to get into. I like this route. You're with a Totally new quarterback. So you got to build this chemistry, right? You're throwing your head back. I see that. I see the frustration, right? But I'm going to walk up to him and say, hey, man, <laughs> you can be mad all you want, <laughs> bro. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so figure it out. You know what I'm saying? But it's hard playing with a rookie quarterback. Like Chase said, they are dealing with a lot, right? You're used to getting the ball in certain situations. Whether it's wide open, whether it's tight coverage, whatever it may be, you're used to getting the ball. With a rookie quarterback, some of these throws that Aaron Rodgers may have thrown me, Derek Carr's not throwing. Mm -hmm. Some of these throws that Justin Fields may have gave you an opportunity ball on or, you know, trying to throw it in tight windows, he's not giving you. So I understand it's frustrating, but you got to build that chemistry with the young fella, and it will happen. It will happen, what's but it is frustrating. That, what's something a veteran receiver can do to get on the same page with a rookie so what I used So what I used to say to Derek Carr is, Stop out thinking yourself, dog. Ooh, if it's one-on-one -on -one coverage, throw it up to me and I make you look right, right? That's I always really used nice, to tell Derek bro. Carr, 
I didn't get drafted because I caught slid. They didn't come to San Jose State yes. like, man, he catch it, he go down. Yes. No, they see me here, yeah. break a tackle. Right? So, ah, how are you to it? So, so, so I'm like, let me go, show, let me go do that. You know what I'm saying? They drafted you from Fresno State because you can throw. Throw it to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what the coverage is. Too, right? Build Help trust. Out. Build That's trust. It. Very well said. What up, YouTube family? Welcome to the facility. Thanks for watching, and you better be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to get more highlights from the show and all of our exclusive content.